Heidi ho! Let's go! Here we are with chapter 7, lesson number 6, Missing Coefficients. Where are they? Don't worry, Grace, we will find them. A lot of the time, then, with your polynomial, you will be given your coefficients, which are the numbers in front of your x cubed and x squared and x and so on. But sometimes these will be missing and they'll be replaced by a letter. So you may have a x cubed or px. But you will be given enough information in order to work out what these missing coefficients are. So you can find out the values for a or p or whatever letter you have. We can use factor theorem to find unknown coefficients in polynomials. So I'll do a few examples of that. So example number one. If x plus 3 is a factor of 2x to the power of 4 plus 6x to the power of 3 plus px squared plus 4x minus 15, find the value of p. So to do this, we are told that x plus 3 is a factor, which means then that if x plus 3 is a factor, if we divide this polynomial by x plus 3, we will end up with a remainder of 0. So let's do that. So if you divide it by x plus 3, remember the first thing you do is you would set x plus 3 equal to 0. Subtract 3 from both sides and x equals negative 3. So when you set up your L shape, you know over here to the left of this vertical line, you will have a negative 3. The coefficients, just check, you've got x to the power of 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. There's no x terms missing, so you can write down the coefficients. So we've got 2, 6, p because it's px squared and 4 and negative 15. Working our way along then with negative 3, bring the 2 down, or 2 add 0 is just going to be 2, multiply through by the negative 3, so 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, add the columns, multiply across, add the columns again, p add 0 is just p, multiply by negative 3, we've got negative 3p, Add, we've got negative 3p plus 4, I'm just putting the letter first. Multiply by negative 3, so to do that, multiply each term by negative 3, giving me 9p minus 12. And add in this negative 15, I'd have 9p take 27. Now remember, because x plus 3 is a factor, when we divide this polynomial through by x plus 3, we expect to get 0 here, and we should be getting 0, which means then that... If we sub in negative 3, we will get 0 out. So the remainder is 0. So since x plus 3 is a factor, the 9p take away 27 equals 0. Or in other words, 9p is 27. And if you divide both sides by 9, p would equal 3. So that is example 1. Let's move on to example number 2. Find the values of a and b if x minus 2 and x plus 4 are factors of x to the power of 4 plus ax to the power of 3 minus x squared plus bx minus 8. So this time, oh no, we've got two unknowns. We've got a and b. However, we do have two pieces of information. We're told that x minus 2 and x plus 4 are both factors. So let's deal with them one at a time. First of all, let's think x minus 2 is a factor. So if it's a factor, if we divide this polynomial by x minus 2, we will get a remainder of 0. Yay! So let's do that. So set x minus 2 equal to 0. Add 2 to both sides. x equals 2. Divide it. So set it up with your L shape. To the left of the vertical line, you write down 2. Write down the coefficients. We've got x to the power of 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So the coefficients would have 1, then a, because it's ax cubed, then minus 1, then bx, because the coefficient's just b, and then negative 8. So add the columns. We'd have 1. Multiply by the negative 2. Multiply across by 2, sorry. Multiply across. We'd have just 2. Add. That gives me a add 2. Multiply by the 2. I'd have 2a add 4. Add the columns. 2a add 3. Multiply by the 2. I'd have 4a add 6. Add. I'm just writing it in the form of a plus b plus number. So 4a plus b plus 6. Multiply by 2. So 8a plus 2b plus 12. And then add in that negative 8. I'd have 8a plus 2b plus 4. Now remember, because x minus 2 is a factor, if we divide this through by x minus 2, we will get 0 out. So you can say that since x minus 2 is a factor, f of 2, in other words, uh, this 8a 
plus 2b plus 4 must equal 0. So there, that gives us an equation. There's an infinite number of possibilities, though, for a and b, so we need more information to work out what they will be. But we are also told that x plus 4 is a factor. So if we divide the polynomial by x plus 4, we will also get 0. So let's do that. So set x plus 4 equal to 0. Subtract 4 from both sides, and x is negative 4. Set up your L shape again, use your synthetic division, and you would have negative 4 to the left of this vertical line. Bring the 1 down, 1 add 0 is 1. Multiply through by negative 4, and have negative 4. If you add the columns, you will have uh, a takeaway 4. Multiply by the negative 4 is negative 4a plus 16. Add the columns, negative 4a plus 15. Multiply each term by negative 4, gives me 16a take away 60. If I add the columns, I'd have 16a plus b take away 60. Multiply through by negative 4, and then add in this negative 8. I get negative 64a take away 4b plus 232. Now remember, because the x plus 4 was a factor, if I divide the polynomial by it, I will get 0 out for the remainder. So you can say that since x plus 4 is a factor, f of negative 4, so using negative 4 here, it will get 0 out. So you can say the negative 64a take away 4b plus 232 must equal 0. So where do you go from there? Sahana, what are you thinking? Oof, Sahana, spot on. Well done. You want to use Ava's favourite thing in the whole wide world. If you think about it, we've got these two equations. And we can then work out the values of a and b using simultaneous equations. Ooh, look at Ava's smile. So to use simultaneous equations, what I'd probably do is rewrite them slightly. I'd have the a and b's on one side and put the numbers on the other side. So doing that, move the negative 4 to the other side. Sorry, move the 4 to the other side, it gives me negative 4. And move the positive 232 to the other side and it get the negative 64a take away 4b equals negative 232. From there I've got these two equations and I want to solve them simultaneously. So to do that you can do it different ways but I'd probably think right well I've got a 2b here and I've got a 4b here so I could always double this here and then I'd have 4b in both. So let's do that. So solving simultaneously. Multiply this equation here by 2, multiply every single term by 2, and I will get 16a plus 4b equals negative 8. This second equation, just leave it exactly as it is. From there, if you look, you've got a 4b and a 4b. One's positive, one's a negative, so to eliminate them, you can add the equations together. If you do that then, 16a add negative 64a will give me negative 48a. The b's will cancel out, they will eliminate each other, and negative 8 add negative 232 is negative 240. Divide both sides by negative 48, and you get a to be 5. Once you know a is 5 though, what do you do after that? Woo! Substitution, you want to sub it in. Sub it into any equation you like. I'm going to sub it into this one here because it's nice small numbers, it's quite easy numbers, so I'd then have 8a add 2b equals negative 4, replace a with 5, I'd have 40 add 2b is negative 4, subtract the 40 from both sides and 2b is negative 44, and divide both sides by 2, just like that, and you get b to be negative 22. So I found the values of a and b, just finishing that off, highlighting that fact, we'd say that a is 5 and b is negative 22. Woo! Let's try one more example. Example number 3. One root of the equation x cubed plus kx squared x cubed plus kx squared plus 5x minus 14 equals 0 is x equals 1. So in other words, x equals 1 is one of the roots of that equation. Find k and hence find the other roots. So there's two methods for doing this. The first method you could think, right, well if x equals 1 is a root, it means that if you sub in 1 and in place of x you will get 0 out. So let's do that. So replace x with 1 and you would end up with instead of x cubed you'd have 1 cubed plus k times 1 squared plus 5 times 1 take away 14. Simplify that 
I'd have 1 add k add 5 take 14 equals 0. Simplify it so k take away 8 is 0, so k would equal 8. So that is one way I could do it, and that is absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that. Remember, though, when you are substituting a value in, you can do that, or what you can do is you could set it out just like this. So you can write down your L shape, and you can write down the coefficients, and then you can work your way along from left to right. We know one of the roots is x equals 1, so we can write that down. Add the columns, so we'd have 1, multiply through by the 1, I'd still have 1. Add, so I've got k add 1, multiply, so it's k add 1. Add, so it's k add 6, multiply by 1, so it's still k add 6. And then add the columns, so I'd have k minus 8. Remember though, that you will be getting 0 out, so k minus 8 must be equal to 0, because x equals 1 is a root. If you know k minus 8 equals 0, then k will equal 8. After that though, we're wanting to find the other roots. And what we've done is we've just got one root. So to find the other roots, what we then need to do is we need to factorize it. And to factorize it, this is where method two is probably going to be your preferred method. Because you know k is equal to eight, you could rewrite this and you can replace k with eight. So you can replace k obviously with eight. k add one would be eight add one, so that would be nine. So you can just rewrite it. If you do rewrite it, this is what you will get. And it means it's going to be really easy to factorize it. Whereas if you went with method one, you'd then have to do this afterwards to, to factorize it fully anyway. Just remember that if k equals one, if x equals one, sorry, is a root, you can say that x minus one is a factor. So you could split that up. So you've got x minus one times. And the way you get the coefficients of, of the other parts is you want to look at what you've got down here. So we'd have 1x squared plus 9x plus 14. Factorize that, I'd have x minus 1, and then factorize x squared, add 9x, add 14, I'd have x plus 2, x plus 7. Therefore, if it's all equal to 0, then you could say that if x minus 1 was equal to 0, then x would equal 1. If x plus 2 was equal to 0, x would equal a negative 2. And if x plus 7 was equal to 0, x would equal negative 7. Therefore, we have found all the other roots and the value of k. So that is us finished with example 3. Try some of these questions on your own, see how you get on. You're really just wanting to use factor theorem to find missing coefficients. See how you get on finding them. Good luck. Bye! Yeah.